And welcome back. It's now, uh, of course, time for us to go through the big stories of the day as we get through the new super review. As always, keep your tweets coming in at K24 TV. Your SMS is, as always, on 21222. As you look at the big stories right here on K24 this morning, right before we took the break, we we're talking about the 72 million shilling uh, heist and how the sentiment of very many youth is that I wish I was part of those eight. Mm. It's, it's unfortunate <laughs> that I'm not there. Not unfortunate yes. that the money was robbed in the first place. Yes. And, and I, I, I once wrote and said that Kenya is a country of thieves and thieves in which that's what we are mm -hmm. okay that it's thieves and thieves in waiting and the reason is very simple see if you go to the United States of America for yes. nearly a hundred years you can say how people have made money you can talk about Carnegie you cannot talk about Bill Gates you can say this is where he started this is the garage where he started this is where he made his big deal yeah. this is where he hired his first employee mm -hmm. in this country even the people we call industrialists if you look closely enough, they're all mad with stories of theft, illegal logging, or being a funny pharmacist, all of them. Let me tell you, for as long as every hero when you flip the page is a thief, for as long as you go to Kiza Lounge and the people hanging out with bottles of whiskey and their hands like this, all of them are thieves. When will a young person ever sit down and think there is merit to working hard? The truth of this country is this. Look, if you go to a cooperative bank, they've got 2,000 employees and they produce 2 billion, 3 billion, 6 billion in profit, okay? You have a certain governor. He has his wife and his daughter, okay? And their business can produce 500 million overnight. So you tell me, who wants to build a 2,000 person business or do you want to do a funny damn deal and then you have the same profit as cooperative bank and your overheads are you, your wife, and a trip to Italy, right. surely. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. For as long as that is the story of Kenya, that, e listen, if you flip the newspaper, every person you see who is rich has a theft scandal. Every person driving a big thing has a theft scandal. Now you have not a single person who can say, listen, this is what my brain has given, this is what my hard work has given, without a negative story, our youth do not have heroes. Actually, let's take it from that particular point because that's a story we are to come back to after the break. Right. And the person in question is Nairobi Governor uh, Mike Sonko. Mm. Fresh details, Mia Sonko in garbage collection probe and uh, alleged stories of, you know, kickbacks as to how he was getting his money right there from uh, Amaco Insurance, Hardy Enterprises, Todi Civil Engineering, ROG Limited and Abab Auto Care. Uh, he says that uh, most of these payments were actually land deals that he had done and people were paying for that. <laughs> and he has the title deeds to prove these particular uh, payments were actually for that. Mm -hmm. Although this is still a case uh, that's going, uh, you know, go probably going to be taken to court <laughs> if the DPP decides to prosecute this one. He had also said on Friday that he would name his deputy governor and he would be ready to step aside mm -hmm. if indeed he had to at this particular point in time. He has not named the said uh, deputy governor, but are we looking at a case of if indeed the DPP decides to prosecute him, where do we go next? We have stayed without a deputy governor in Nairobi for quite a while. We already got used to that. Oh, yeah. What happens when he steps aside? Do we look for the speaker now to take over um, interim? Because it doesn't seem like he's naming this deputy every time I'm very, I'm very keen to hear what Ben is saying. Mr. Davis, <laughs> very keen. Uh, Jeff, the you vacuum see, is coming to yeah, bite us now. No, actually, uh, I think if you are followed keenly, mm -hmm the story around Governor Sonko since mm -hmm. Tuesday mm -hmm. until this morning, what we are reading in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very <coughs> interesting case of um, people who are running in the world to look for things to do. And I'll give you a chronology. Who are these people running I'll, the world? I'll give you a chronology. Uh -huh. uh, if you read through this uh, particular headline right. that fresh details emerge in Sonko Probe as mm -hmm. three firms are investigated. When you go to the story and when you read what was in the papers yesterday mm -hmm. and Friday and Thursday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, one thing comes out very clearly. The, according to the ESEC, the governor is under probe for garbage tenders mm -hmm. that were awarded in, at the beginning of mm -hmm. 2018. That's one fact. On the second level, we are told that the governor started receiving money from one of the, these, um, started receiving bribes from one of these uh, tenderpreneurs mm -hmm. as early as April 2017. It is actually here, mm -hmm. in 2017, when he was Nairobi senator. 
who starts receiving bribes two years in advance for a contract that will come two years later? That's mm -hmm. one issue. Secondly, here we are, we are talking about a, a garbage tender, and we are told that he received money from Amaco Insurance. Amaco is a, is a company that entered into a contract with City Hall in 2016, when he was still a senator. Mm -hmm. Amaco gets their, or works with a company called um, Arbab, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, okay. And mm -hmm. some com company that does repairs mm -hmm. on Kangundo Road. Uh, Money was, is alleged to have been uh, paid by, uh, by City Hall to Amaco around 2018. Oh, yeah, yeah, 2017 actually, was, uh, two months after he came into office. Immediately after that, it is said that money that was paid to uh, Arbab was wired to the governor's account. Mm -hmm. The contract between City Hall and uh, Amaco is not under probe. But the governor is alleged to have received a bribe of insurance money for a garbage tender. Mm -hmm. I mean, you must be a first-class fool to believe the kind of rubbish that ESCC is treating Kenyans mm -hmm. to. Because in my view, they have nothing specific that they are holding against Sonko. This is pure politics that is being played. <laughs> and as it starts... But ben, they also said, just one second, because yes. they also said, according to the ACC, yes. 162 million shillings was paid to two firms. Let me finish, yes, Let me yes, finish ben, before yes. you jump in. Yes. For collecting garbage <laughs> in areas that they had not been pre-qualified for yes. this pre-qualification is you but know, now there yes is, or no yes the there, money there, has there, moved. there is simple things What's going what on the there? ESCC should be treating us to is telling us there are there is 162 million shillings that was not accounted for one they should the same way they did with Waititu they tell us this money was paid to garbage collection company Mark Bichache this money was wired to Nerima then it was it was found in uh, Governor Sonko's account mm -hmm. now we are talking about bribes that is alleged to have started receiving in 2017 mm -hmm. April while he was senator for a garbage contract Contract that was awarded in actually April. I mean, I mean. So from where you stand, our governor has no, has no crime the, plans. Of and I'll give you now the real scenario. I'll uh -huh. give you the real scenario. You realize, and the the, tr the tribulations that Governor Sonko is facing today mm -hmm. have everything to do with the political landscape in this country. <laughs> and I'll I'll take you through to to understand. As it stands, actually, there's an opinion poll that was done by a major one of the major opinion pollsters in this country right. uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it was stopped to be released. You know why? Why is that? Because Governor Sonko is in the top two of the presidential candidates in 2017. And I'll, I'll, I want to give you a chronology. As we stand, as we stand, uh, we are looking at a scenario whereby already there is system fellows who are determined to make sure that the deputy president can never ascend. Because they are still struggling. And that's why you're seeing Mudavadi in the, in the front papers. Mm -hmm. Because they have been struggling to create something that is pro-system that can work. Okay. Now, just okay, a moment. Okay, just a moment. One second. One second. One second. Okay. One second. Now that that is not working, uh -huh. now the initially they had a headache in uh, trying to curtail the, the, the aspirations of the deputy president. Now they have another scenario here of another candidate <laughs> who actually they, they did not even contemplate, mm -hmm. but who is bigger than what they were imagining. So now that's why, look at that uh, uh, statement. They are talking about the governor paying, uh, having received money uh, from this uh, Maura fella for a contract in Kwale County. They are not talking about Nairobi County. There this is, is let a bring you this. Let me bring treated. in on this because as you can see, Mr. Yes. Ben, yes. Uh, <laughs> not buying it and of course has always been a staunch defender of uh, governor right there. Mm -hmm. Is it a political play or is there impropriety? Because the ESCC is saying, let's follow the money and see what's going on here. Various entities are paying uh, this or above auto care in terms mm -hmm. of uh, monies that are going there. Some you're not even sure why they're paying this particular organization. Yes. Abab also paying the governor. Uh, some money. He said it's for a land deal that had been done. He has a title deed to prove that. Yes. Ben is sticking to that particular story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once again, Nerima, is it impropriety or is this, as Ben is trying to throw into the mix, a political player for 2022? You know, I'm going to be honest. When, when the story first broke out, about a week ago we were in the office yes. and we normally decide what are we going to share on our platforms mm -hmm. as news. And I remember us discussing and I said to my colleagues, this Sonko story, something is up. Mm -hmm. There just has to be something political. It didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And the way it was just, the way it happened, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Ben in that aspect. But I do think that there are trails of misappropriation. Right. He is not a perfect individual. Right. And as we know, <laughs> even with his history, uh -huh. it, it wouldn't surprise me that they are. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with him in terms mm -hmm. of there is some right. political play. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Mark, the political <laughs> analyst, I'll bring you in on this as well. A new dimension <laughs> as to you know what's going on right here in terms of the accountability and the probability of uh, um, a political angle as to what's going on at the ESCC right now? A self-confessed prison prefect mm -hmm. has to be <laughs> probed yes. with a lot of intelligence mm -hmm. because if there's one thing you should know about Sonko is he's crazy but he's not mad. Mm 
Mm -hmm. it, that means there is a <laughs> method to his madness. Let me explain what I mean. You see, we know for a fact, for a fact, that Sonko is deeply involved in the procurement processes of county government. He's put it on Facebook Live many times. Okay? Now, I just want to give the country a basic lesson. Very in, quickly. In how, to most yes, to just, just in a 30 seconds, a basic lesson on how to receive a bribe and get away with it. Okay. Number one, have an asset you can claim to have sold. Mm -hmm. Now, because there is no upper limit to how much an acre of land can be sold, you can have one acre that you've had in Kangundo Road mm -hmm. for since Jesus was on the cross. Then, when you are ready to receive your bribe, you tell the guy, listen, you wire me 50 times the value of my land. I will sign a transfer certificate. You own the land, mm -hmm. but you've given me 50 times. That transaction becomes immediately legal. But why does it become suspect? Why? Is it so coincidental uh -huh. that the person buying your land uh -huh. is also a person who's contracted by the county government? Now, I'm not saying guilt here. Uh -huh. I'm just saying that there is a route uh -huh. by which you can receive a okay. bribe awesome. and be yes. defendable on this show. Okay. And of course, also, as I <laughs> mentioned, <laughs> just, no, 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 because yes. you need to move on, Ben, but what yes. we are also asking as we move on to the next story, yes. if indeed the DPP decides to, you know, go ahead and prosecute this particular case, yes. for residents of Nairobi County, yes. who is the leadership now? Who do we turn to? Beatrice Elagi. That's who we are going to next. She'll be acting governor <laughs> until we sort this out? Well, uh, as you are aware, actually, she was reinstated by mm -hmm. the court uh, yes. in May this year. But you see, she has not been able to resume her duties because right. she, she, she uh, builds an, a workable, an, an unworkable it's relationship with the, with the MCS. But quickly, I want to mention something to Mark. You know, now, actually, th this entire framework that ESCC is coming up with is getting me worried. Like in the scenario by today, if Mark um, buys me a cup of tea or sends me M Pesa 2000, but maybe I'm stuck out of fuel when I'm coming from McQueenie and he sends me 2000 bob and eventually I become an MCA and then Mark uh, happens somehow to get a contract at uh, the county government where I'm an MCA. Now I'll, I'll be told that I am receiving bribes for a contract that I may award Mark in 2027. Mm -hmm. I mean th this kind of uh, th this kind of um, theatrics must come to an end. But now on, in terms of um, in terms of uh, 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 the vacuum that may occur at City Hall. Believe you me, and uh, we are here uh, to, to witness. ESCC now is struggling to find something that does not exist. And eventually, I don't think there's any crisis at City Hall. We shall cross that bridge when eventually okay. is removed uh, or is, uh, is asked to step out from office. But they must prove that there is a case. Okay. This idea of taking us into a circus of 2017, okay, 2015 okay, does okay, not then. exist. Okay, let's move on now to uh, what happened over the weekend. We had the ODM uh, party primaries as far as Kibra is concerned. We now have the candidates who ought to uh, be running that particular uh, race. We actually did have a story on this. Let's take a look at that and then get back to our uh, panel right here. Food Kenya, the latest party to join the Kibra November 7th face-off, traversed the vast slum where party leader Moses Wetangla <laughs> unveiled party candidate Ramadan Butichi at Lindy Grounds in Kibra, promising to cause an upset in the mini poll. We are tired of people giving us false promises. So, so. Tunataka mwaka huu uwe mwaka umebadilika. Na waletea salamu sa ndugu yangu Steven Kalonzo Musyoka wa Waipa. Yeye tuko pamoja na kesho tukipeleka engineer kupeleka makaratasi yake nitakuwa na wabunge wa Waipa pia na mimi. Nyinyi ndugu zetu wa Kibra tunajua historia yenu. Tunajua hali yenu. Tunajua hali ambayo unyonge uko hapa Kibra. Na mimi nimeleta engineer kutembea na wananchi wa Kibra. The entry of Fort Kenya in the race means all the three NASA principles will be testing their political strength in the ODM nominated constituency. That also saw ANC party leader Salim Davadi flank his candidate Elliot Owalo at the Pentecostal Assemblies of God Church in Makina where Jubilee was on the receiving end. And because I want to offer servant and effective leadership to the people of Kenya, nimejiunga na ile chama ambayo ideology yake, policies zake zitatoa suluhu kwa zile shida tuko nazo kama ya Kenya wa kawaida. Ruto and Jubilee are the problem. Ha! 
hao ndio wametuletea shida sasa wanasema i go and become part of the problem no anc is going to provide the solution The Kibra race is seen as a duel between Deputy President Dr. William Ruto and ODM party leader Raila Odinga, who are using the mini poll to test their political clout in the city ahead of the 2022 presidential poll. A defeat for ODM candidate Imran Okoth, who won the party nominations on Saturday night, will be an upset for Odinga in a constituency he enjoys fanatical following and has enjoyed diehard support for decades. Kibra is so ODM and looking at the physical location and the culture and the people who are there for anybody else to penetrate ODM I, I think he will be somebody it's not the numbers i'm telling lawyers are the majority but they don't have the say they say he will be with the lawyers there the entry of jubilee candidate mcdonald mariga has also shaken the race given his unexpected candidature backed by the deputy president a win for mariga will give the deputy president bragging rights in the city and confidence in his march to the 2022 presidential race mariga's entry has however divided the jubilee party with a section of mps pledging to support odm's imran okoth instead of mariga jubilee is banking on key projects in the constituency like opening up the slums three roads and mariga's popularity ford kenya and anc are selling their candidates as homegrown to identify with voters in the cosmopolitan constituency Six parties among them Kanu and Movement for Democracy and Growth MDG are also in the race. The November 7 Kibra parliamentary by election is not just for the parliamentary candidate. There we have it. Uh Kibra now all systems go as far as campaigning to November 7th is concerned right there. Uh ODM has done their party primaries. We now know who's leading uh the Democratic the Orange Democratic Movement. Mariga still in the running for Jubilee in terms of being the candidate right there. For the people of Kibra, what does this mean? Because every headline that we're talking about isn't talking about what will happen at the constituency level. It's this battle between Ruto and Raila. 2022 will be seen in Kibra. <laughs> Nirima, let me come to you very quickly. 30 yes. seconds uh, as we talk about this. What does a Kibra, you know, a, 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 you know, this resident of Kibra, where does his, his or her voice stand in all of this? It's a bigger thing at play. It is uh, it is but it's not only happening in Kibra. Mm. We also remember that it happened in the by-election in Ugenya as mm -hmm. well where because MDG won there it uh -huh. was viewed as a battle between Raila and Ruto. Mm -hmm. So everything that's happening in terms of elections is being viewed as 2022. Mm -hmm. And I say that it's going to be an interesting thing to watch especially for Kibra as to who they select even though there's a higher chance that it's going to be Okoth's brother mm -hmm. but also in the aspect that Okoth Kenneth Kenokoth was really supportive when it came to supporting women, policies around women, truth agenda. He was always supporting it in parliament yes. and I think the women will always remember that. I think mm -hmm. they'll come out to vote. So Kibra is not a question of where the young people will vote as the majority if there even is a voting block that is young people. Mm -hmm. It'll be where will the women vote? Right. And and that's where people are not even conversating. Right. Uh Ben yes. I'll bring in this as well in the sense that mm -hmm. for some people think that whoever who gets in Kibra yes. has the easy Easiest job for any MP. Just finish what Okoth had started. Mm, yes. So the question of whether they'll get it right or wrong, it's it. It could take anyone to get in there and get this job done. The question is who gets it. Actually, up to Friday evening, uh, the race between uh, in Kibra looked a bit um, a bit lost. But now it's mm -hmm. clear, and it is going to be quite a duel. Uh, it's not going to be a, a, a three-horse race uh, right. because Modavadi does not exist in that. I'll still maintain. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh, it is going to be very interesting because Imran brings in uh, institutional memory, and having been, uh, I think he was the CDF manager under Ken Okoth. Uh, he has he has been working with that community for the period that Ken has been MP. So that gives him really a major advantage. On the other side. Uh, we have uh, Mariga who is uh, equally popular but not really primarily tested politically what i'm thinking in my view 
uh, now that we have a candidate who has been with, with the people of Kibra for this long, and now we have a candidate who is appearing to be fronted by the deputy president, naturally, as Professor Manyora has indicated, uh, Kibra uh, tends to be inclined towards ODM. And the presence of the DP may be repulsive to the majority of the ODM supporters. Mm -hmm. That may prove to be costly for Mariga in right. this race. And let's talk about Mariga, uh, Mr. Mark, on this, in the sense that hasn't yet fought any political battle even when uh, his, uh, it had been taken to the appeals board, that was quietly sorted out in a back room somewhere. So for a person who's about to jump into a very hot political race, does he have what it takes to actually go through? Uh, he has two months to campaign. Will he manage to put this together? What works for Mariga is, one, he's got money. Two, he's got jubilee machinery, or at least the part of jubilee machinery that he seems to be aligned to. Yeah. And that will come to bear. The, the, the tragedy of the Mariga candidature is this, that number one, for once, we're looking at Kibra not as a people who are looking for leadership, but suddenly you've seen the statistics of how many lawyers, how many lures, and, and that's a tragedy. It's a tragedy that one of the most cosmopolitan uh, uh, constituencies in the country is now being polarized, polarized in, in a tribal sense. Now, if it does polarize tribally and he does carry the Luya vote, then that means a lot of things for, 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 uh, for Deputy President William Ruto because people will now begin to say, have the Luya swung, has the uh, bull Bonihalwale finally pulled the tribe to mm -hmm. one side and all sorts of things. Now, unfortunately, all of those things do not matter when it comes to development. It only matters on one day, which is election day. And, and that's the issue. Now, the other problem, which can, this country is very funny sometimes in how it handles things, we, 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 we give out a circular saying we do not want celebrities endorsing betting companies. Then we front, yes. by the same government, a betting company mascot to a constituency which you want to remove betting most from. You understand? And, and that's the irony of it. You see, mm -hmm. I wish we ha were a country of consequences because you cannot support betting and want to run in Kibra. Support betting, go run in Mudaiga because there betting is a luxury people can afford. You see, the, the, the history of Mariga as a footballer, how does it then play out for the people of Kibra? And that's the key question that I keep asking. As in, for me, don't tell me he can score goals. That's fine. Because if an MP was about going to join Bunge FC, good for us. Let me tell you, this name recognition has beat us in the mm -hmm. places, yes. right? <laughs> Jaguar, right? Mm -hmm. Jaguar and xenophobia, same side, okay? Mm -hmm. Jaguar is known for two things, fighting Babu Owino and being arrested for saying silly things. But why did, was he elected? Popularity. Okay. And that is the thing that we must be careful for. I have no problem with Mariga. My only question is, what value does he bring to bear? We shall wait and see because there's two months of campaign, so he will spell out his agenda and, and plan and, for the and people let's of not forget. Let's not forget. God has blessed him with a lot of money for a long time. Yes. And if he cannot show us what he's done for the benefit of humanity with that a lot of money, then the little he will get in parliament will not change him. Again, he has two months to show us what he did and what he's planning on doing uh, as the campaign kicks off from now up until uh, as we get to D-Day, November 7th. Our final story of the day, of course, what we were treated to yesterday when church and politics mix. This was in a church in Moranga. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Minor commander nominated MP was there, calls on uh, Ndindi Nyoro. When he gets on, he decides, because this is my area, yes. I will not uh, let you call the other speakers. Mm -hmm. I need to show the people that this is our area and we are adequately represented. Yes. Let me do that. Mm -hmm. A scaffold ensued within a church premises. Mm -hmm. And again, the question comes up, because we never see such instances in a mosque Absolutely. during Friday yes. prayers Absolutely. or any other place of worship. Mm -hmm. Only in churches do we get to see you know, the pulpit, you yes. know, it, it getting such treatment. Mark, mm -hmm. you're, a, you're a man who has, you know, preached in different <laughs> forms. Let me start with you. Yes. Is this a monster of your own making? Because every Sunday you want your MP and Heshmiwa <laughs> to come and talk and probably leave a donation. Mm -hmm. Is this what you get? Well, most churches would never invite me through the, their doors. That's yes. fast. Uh -huh. And the reason they would not invite me is this, that we don't worship the same God. You see, if you worship money, and this is the, the, the tendency of people who worship money. The moment your God checks in, you change your service. 
That's how you should know what you worship. In other words, how many times have you seen that the preacher is about to get on to preach, then a politician checks in, and then the order of the service is changed? That means God was about to deliver his message. Then God was told, eh, wait a minute, we've got a VIP over here we've got to cater for. Yes. And that's the problem. Our churches today and our preachers today are worshippers of money. And politicians, when they come to these churches, they come with envelopes, which is why the preacher will stand there and tolerate this because at the end of the day, uh, the Kiyoleake guy will come and give him a, a brown envelope and the Tangatanga -tanga guy will give him a brown envelope. Him, he's happy, his God is in his pocket, while the people who came for the real God will keep go missing. Now, let's address what the germane issue here is. The reason why in Islam, predominantly in Kenya, you will not see this kind of political wrangling because everyone who walks into that mosque is required to submit to God. And that's in, an issue we don't have yes, in the churches. In Christian churches, if they can be... In fact, they're not churches. In Christian... Places what is kiosks? Worship. Kiosks, that's what Nani called them. In these kiosks, what <laughs> happens? Listen, if you are, I'm at a kiosk and I'm selling my sweets, okay? And I know Nerima pays two shillings and then still wants change. And I know him, he gives me five shillings and he'll tell me keep the three bob. And you, you come with a hundred shillings, right? When Nerima is there and she's alone, she's VIP. When he shows up, he's more VIP. When you show up, I forget their names. That's what happens in these churches. <laughs> Nerima, let me bring in on this as well. <laughs> we saw it play out uh, right there. We saw, you know, men of the cloth confused as to what to do. Yes. But some people are like, you know what? You allow these people to be yeah. making utterances every, every time they come to your services. You get what you deserve. Yeah, when you look at the role of the church, especially even in the 90s when it came to civil rights movements and civil society, they were integral. In fact, they had a stand and they were very firm on that stand. Right now, when you look at the church, you don't even know where they are lying. In fact, they are always behind the politicians, even as Mark has been saying. So I think that where we are right now, these conversations should not even be had in the church. I've debated whether we should be like Namibia where it's mm -hmm. illegal for a politician to even talk about politics within the church. Right. It's completely right. illegal. Right. Because sometimes it, it can be overbearing, and here you are at a fundraiser for a good cause, but we're doing ego wars in the church. Mr. Mulwa as well, uh, yes. you, you saw how this played out. Yeah. Very ugly. It was very a place untidy, of worship. actually. And um, my take is this. Uh, over time, actually, uh, the church has completely lost the element of spirituality and it is an institution that has been des desecrated. What we have are traders who run things that are a semblance of a, of a spiritual institution. Uh, what I mean is we have reached a point whereby if you look at the church of the 90s and the 80s and the church of this day, it is, it is a sorry state. Uh, we have a case, one of the p most uh, recent nasty incidents we witnessed. Uh, there's, a, there's a story that um, the particular uh, presiding pastor or bishop ran into trouble because he refused to recognize one of the prominent figures <coughs> in government and then now a coup was engineered. Uh, what we saw yesterday is a scenario, is a similar scenario, whereby even the people who are going to that church have got no respect whatsoever for any places of worship. Even in the traditional African society, you just couldn't go and desecrate into the, into the shrines where our grandfathers used to go and worship. So what we are seeing is a case of people who have got no manners, people who have got no respect for anything. It is a culture that has morphed over time, which has been encouraged and fueled by the same church because actually you, in church you have seen people you you go to a church and you're given an envelope at the entrance uh, 200 shillings 500 shillings for, for 5,000 shillings 10,000 shillings whereby uh, your blessings are supposed to be tied by how much you're giving to that particular institution. Okay, so because a politician is coming with more money, is it, I mean, it is, it is a tragic uh, okay. state. Let, 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 yes. We have to leave it at that. Just, Mark, just seconds, out of time. Just ten, ten five seconds. Five seconds, seconds Mark. One of the favors the church needs to stop telling us is who God has chosen in an election. Yes. Because God can't choose so and so, then we go vote. So why are we voting? Thank you very much. We leave it at that yes. particular point, of course. Church and yes. politics, so yes. something people can talk until the cows come home. Mark, Bichachi, thank you so much for making no, time. Rima Wako as well. Good ben Mula, because good of time, I have to do.